Welcome to the Kitchen Table Theology Podcast, where Pastor Jeff Cranston, along with our host, Jen Denton, will discuss biblical theology in an understandable way. You'll discover how to apply biblical truth to your life. Thanks for joining us at the table. Let's get started. Hello, I'm Jeff Cranston. And I'm Jen Denton, and Pastor Jeff and I have a special announcement today. This is our episode 50. 50. <laughs> 50th podcast. We're so excited. And we're doing something special today. We're putting this podcast on video because yeah, we, we just are. needed people to see our sparkling faces <laughs> and our exuberant personalities, right? You so, love that word. Exuberant? Sparkling. Oh, I do Sparkle. like sparkling. Sparkle. All right. Well, anyhow, it makes me we'll, we'll see how exuberant we are. <laughs> So this is how we do it. This is what our setup looks like in all of its grandeur Yeah, right here. That's it. <laughs> and if you go over to our YouTube channel today, you can not only hear the podcast, but you can watch the podcast. Our channel is called Jeff Cranston, so jump on YouTube and check it out. So here we are, 50 podcasts in. We started April of 2020, the worst year for podcasting. <laughs> April has empirically been proven to be the worst month of the worst year of podcasting. And so that's when we started this whole thing. That sounds like us. (laughs) And so thanks everybody for for joining us. Uh, I've had a blast. I've learned a lot. Oh, absolutely. I really have. So what's been uh, been the highlights for you being part of the uh, Kitchen Table Theology podcast? I mean, other than spending just these special moments with my pastor throughout the week, taunting you with my Alabama gear. Um, Yeah, turn that so the camera can't see Big Al. (laughs) Um, No, I think legitimately I have learned a lot for sure. And I think that I think it we speak to a a big demographic of people, Mm -hmm. whether you quote unquote grew up in the church or whether you're a new Christian, there's just so much to dive into. And so I like that we're kind of illuminating that a little bit. But I I like the one two punch of the practical application for sure. That's probably my favorite part. What about you? Well, I think it's just knowing that it's helpful to people. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, kitchen table theologians, thank you for your your questions, your comments. A lot of people will, you know, hit me up on Instagram or catch me around here locally or mm-hmm. shoot an email. And I, I know it's, you know, I know it's landing. And, you know, when you start something like this, especially in the realm of theology, it's not uh, something you think is going to just be so exciting to people, but we're just we're just trying to make it fun, mm-hmm. uh, you know, have a lot of fun with ourselves, but very serious about God and and His Word, and and being able to you know for you and I to be able to deal with questions that real people are asking, you know, we're mm-hmm. not creating the questions and answering them. Mm-hmm. That's been I, I've enjoyed that, and really I I do about an hour and a half to two hours of study for each mm-hmm. podcast. And so that has, that's been really helpful for me because, you know, a lot of it, it was a reminder or a refresher or some of the stuff, you know, you, you just have a working knowledge of, but some of it, you know, I'm like, I'm finding out I'm, I'm learning a lot of things for the first time too. To do that deep dive. And as yeah. people know that have joined us before, I'm doing Linguistic studies as well as I'm learning <laughs> oh, how to we, pronounce we, words along we've, the way. We've learned all, you know. It, it's we been have run the gamut, but it really right has across been. the board, yeah. It's been a, it's been a fun yeah. journey to this point. And we're only, we're only just beginning. We're only just starting. Yeah, our goal's always been a hundred. A hundred. But I've already had ideas for how we could go beyond that. We'll see. If anybody's still listening, uh, <laughs> we'll keep doing it. Well, we're over 10,000, so... That's good. 10, yeah, cumulatively. Damage. Cumulatively, right. but still. But still. You don't know. People it are listening. Could be ten thousand people. Uh, well, we let's put it this way: we have a worldwide audience. We we have the we potential do. to reach we seven I billion like that. people. Okay, we can say that. <laughs> well, hey guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for going on this journey with us, and thanks for joining us today to celebrate fifty. Yes. Yeah. So as we jump in today, we want to remind everybody that we do our best to make theology understandable, especially for those that have never studied theology. And we run against, when we run against those hard to understand concepts, we love breaking it down so that we can have a solid theological explanation, which is not only true to the Bible, but again, is pertinent to the lives that we live. So, and we do try to have some fun along the way. So this is number 50. So why don't you say we actually talk a little theology today? 
Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. No, I'm, 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 I'm good with that. <laughs> so we are, we're going to continue this short series on atonement, the atonement of Christ. And we wanted to make our topic today the best and the grandest. So what could that be? We're going to talk about salvation. Yeah, I thought, you know, there were a few different options available to us. I thought, man, that what better topic to talk about? You know, we're having a little celebration here on our 50th and to talk about salvation. And so to kick it off, we thought, Jen and I thought, mm-hmm. we'll just give you the, the Reader's Digest, very condensed versions of our own salvation stories. So, Jen, how, let's just start with you. Tell us how you came to Christ, where you were, how old you were the events surrounding all of that. Tell us your story. Gotcha. So I was nine. I was at church camp. I was nine. (laughs) Were you? I was at camp. Yeah. Well, you didn't go to Camp Moon, did you? Because I went to Camp Moon. No, man. I went to a better camp. (laughs) So this was Camp Moon, and they had an altar call at the camp. I know. (laughs) Back in the day. So altar call. And aren't you glad? I am glad that they had the altar call. I don't remember who the speaker was. I don't remember what the message was. Mm -hmm. But I do remember, just as I am, was the hymn (laughs) that was playing. And um, that thou biddest me. (laughs) He biddest. Come to thee. I came. Yeah. To the altar. Literally to the altar. But I think one of the other things that stands out to me is there was a young lady from my church who I looked up to who was a counselor at camp that summer and she met me down at the altar. And so that was just a really special moment and has spoken to me over the years. We've actually talked about her daddy on this podcast. He was the man in the three piece suit of my church growing up that always said the Holy ghost. with yeah, the jazz yeah, hands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Denise shout out to you, but she met me down, prayed with me. And so those are the two things that, that stood out to just as I am still every time I can get yeah. a little emotional whenever we don't hear that hymn as much, but there have been some iterations over the years. But well, and it also has about eight stanzas to it, and it I does. can remember being in church <laughs> and us singing that, and we were going to sing it until somebody went forward. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> we're just going to keep it on repeat. Yeah. Come on, he's bidding you. <laughs> yeah, I knew some teenagers who went down just so they could help get the church service closed oh, a little bit just, sooner. Come on, we're going to wrap this yeah. up so I'm we like, can go to the Bojangles. Up with God, I'm not messing with that one, man. <laughs> So, yeah, those were the things I think, you know, and like everyone, you know, that accepts Christ at that age, your your story takes lots of different shapes yeah. and twists and turns along the way. But that was that that key moment. That well, the majority of people sure. uh, come to Christ in, in their earlier years. The mm-hmm. older you get, the less likely it is that people will come to faith in Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Well, what about you? We know nine and we know camp. Yeah, I was. Uh, I grew up in a Christian home. I I I don't remember not believing in God or Jesus. Mm-hmm. It was just a thing. And my grandmother was my um, the first Sunday school teacher I can remember. And I must have been I don't know if I was four, five, six, whatever, something like that. And she's the one who always prayed. She prayed and prayed and prayed that my dad would go into the ministry. Mm. And my dad always said her prayers skipped off a of hymn and hit me. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I had I, a different play in there. <laughs> we, we had a, a camp not too far from where I lived and the camp is still going, um, really well, actually it's called river Valley ranch hmm. and it was a Western themed camp. That does not so, surprise me in the least. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so we we're riding horses and they had a rodeo every Friday night and the oh, people from the area would come in and it was, it was just a, you know, it was a thing, but, Paul Anderson, so I was nine, Paul Anderson from Macon, Georgia, mm. was the the speaker, the preacher, and he was, I think I have this right, he won the gold medal for weightlifting in the 1956 Olympics, and mm. this was 1970. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just remember as a nine-year-old, and I mean... Was he huge? He was a big dude. Yeah, he was. Yeah. I mean, he he was in the Guinness Book of World Records for picking up a Volkswagen. Oh, and gosh. I mean, he was just one of the... He was one of the strong men before, you know, it mm-hmm. got to be a big thing on TV. But I can remember looking at him and going, man, if that guy needs Jesus, you know, as incredible as he mm-hmm. is. And he was doing all these mm-hmm. feats of strength. And, you know, we're just little wide-eyed kids. I mean, we're blown away <laughs> by this. And I can remember walking down to the front and Mm -hmm. what I suppose were college kids, you know, counselors, and sitting up on the front row and praying with with one of them. And and then I got baptized probably later that winter, I Mm -hmm. think. Uh, 
but yeah, like you, I mean, you know, you're nine years old, so mm -hmm. I, I didn't come out of, you know, I wasn't a drug addict or I was, you know, anything yeah. like that. I didn't have this horrific story, but, um, you know, and then the, the light got brighter as, as I mm -hmm. went on. And when I was a college freshman, I think then it really kind of landed and mm -hmm. I made a, I made a, uh, strong, strong, strong commitment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to the Lord then, but I was saved at, at nine. So, mm -hmm. um, that, that's it. And thank goodness. I often think, you know, is there, and I've heard kids say this before, do I have a testimony? You know, if I grew up in the church, everybody does, everybody yeah. does, because yeah. you don't know what you were saved from right. had you not, yeah. you know, had we not accepted Christ at that. Exactly that young, that right. Age. So, well, we've talked about our stories. Let's jump in and see what the Bible has to say about salvation today, shall we? Yeah, I think salvation is one of those words that I think as Christians, at least is what I think. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I think most Christians, you know, who are walking with Christ, you, do you, under, you know what salvation is? Oh, sure, I know it. I know what it is. Mm -hmm. And then if you followed up and said, well, can you define it? Mm hmm we might start porky pigging it at that point. Yeah, ebidy, 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 you know. Uh, but so let, let's give it a shot on, on defining this, and maybe this will help. Maybe this will help someone. Salvation defined is an act of God whereby He delivers a person from hell hmm. because of the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross on our on our behalf. And when God does that, He erases uh, that sin debt that was you know, on his legal record, so to speak, we all have a record against us. We're guilty. And, uh, and God wipes that slate clean and declares us righteous all again, because of what Christ has done. And in doing that, he ensures heaven for us, promises heaven to us. Mm -hmm. And, and I think we tend to compartmentalize that, right? We think, okay, Jesus sacrifice, assurance of heaven, and then where we fall into the, mm -hmm. the mix of all that. So I, I, I like that succinct definition. And speaking of definitions, we, we talk a lot about different words or terms that we try to identify. So what are some other words that can help us to understand salvation? Yeah, I know we've, before when we've had big concepts we're trying to figure out, I know for me and you, it always helps us. Okay, well, what other words are going to help me understand this big, <laughs> this word? Propitiation. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, which was our last podcast. It was, right? it yeah. was, that was a good one. Um, yeah, there's some other words that maybe shed some light on uh, the word salvation. So, and we'll just turn to Latin and Hebrew and Greek. So in Latin, when you talk about salvation, you also get words like save and health and help. And the Hebrew la language, which the Old Testament is written in, you get words like breathe, mm. uh, ease, safety so you start thinking about that and like well okay well hmm breathe you know mm -hmm. you can breathe again you know there's mm -hmm. there's an ease that comes with what god has done that i um uh, i don't have to work for this anymore mm -hmm. you know this is not up to me mm -hmm. this is up to christ and what he's done safety greek language of the new testament uses words uh that shed light on salvation like recovery redemption remedy rescue welfare, uh, and all of those contain the idea pertinent to salvation of preservation from danger and or, or preservation from disease. They keep us from horrible things. Mm -hmm. That's the idea of salvation. And they all imply at some level safety, health, spiritual prosperity. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It is, and I, I always love, <laughs> I even just like looking at the definition of English words and it's, you know, one or two sentences, and then you get the definition of Hebrew words. <laughs> yeah, it's There's paragraphs. all this depth to yeah. it, which is yeah. really nice. Well, I, I think a lot of times as we as we flush things out, we like to think— Flush we, things out or flesh things flesh, out? Flesh, flesh, flesh. What are we doing, flesh. fleshing or fleshing? I don't know. Whatever it is. <laughs> I don't know. They're making supposedly a, a new word in the, in the definite, in the dictionary. Did you know that? Say it again. Instead of supposedly, yeah. they're making supposedly— a new word, yeah. What Shout is the out world to Joey on to? Friends because he he yeah he, that along. <laughs> he coined that. He won't have to learn anything supposedly. new. So if they can supposedly. do it, supposedly, yeah, supposedly. Lord help us. Did you did she go to the store? Supposedly, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, I might, I might like that word. That's a good word. <laughs> but a lot of times, I, I think we we tend to think about salvation in in the short term as okay, 
God is erasing my past. Right. You know, this is what happened then. This is what happened then. Yeah. The, the old has passed away. But there's more to that because mm-hmm. the new has come. So what are some of those you know, indications for our present and then for our future? Yeah, I, I think we all tend to place... I know I did forever. Oh, for sure. We, we tend to place salvation as something that only had any effect in the past. And so we, we, as Christians, we'll talk about, well, when I got saved or when I came to Christ, and we're always talking about the past, mm-hmm. but you're absolutely right. It, salvation has a great deal to do with our past, but also with our present and with our future. Mm-hmm. So let's break that down a little bit. Well, salvation in the Bible really has three tenses to it, mm. and it's pa- it, it really it really is comprised of past, present, and future. So, there's an element of we have been saved. There's an element of we are being saved, and there's an element of we will be saved. Mm. Mm-hmm. So that that gives us a lot to unpack. There, you know, I think we understand the part of we were saved, as as we've mm-hmm. already noted. But what about those other two? Yeah, the Christian has been saved, passed from the guilt and penalty of sin. We're we're safe. God's promised us eternal life again, all because of what Christ has done. And I think that most of us as Christians, uh, we understand that. We totally get that. But that's not all. The Bible says that we are also being saved from the habits and the dominion of sin. Mm. So you've got Romans uh, 6.14 there in front of you. Would you read that for us, please? Sure. For sin shall not be a master over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. So sin shall not be a master over you. That's mm-hmm. that's present, mm-hmm. and that's even a little bit future. Uh, so the habit, the dominion of sin, are also things we are being safe from right now. You know, ex- example, there, there are things, because you have come to Christ, there are things that used to tempt us, used to tempt you, that no longer do. Mm. Well, why is that? Mm-hmm. Well, it's because I am being saved from that, from the dominion and its effects and those sinful habits. Now, that we get into the area of sanctification there, mm-hmm. but that's also part of sal- salvation. There are places that you used to go you no longer frequent. There are things you used to purchase, and you're, you, know, you don't want to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking about things that were sinful. Mm-hmm. You know, but the, the, the proof of being saved uh, in part, and the proof of our salvation is, I don't do what I used to do. I don't have that temptation any longer. Now, don't we wish that was true for absolutely everything? everything. <laughs> but it, you know, but even in those things that we are tending to be tempted in the most, we're still no longer, ma- it's still no longer a master over us. Mm-hmm. Jesus is still working that out in us. As it says, we are no longer a slave right. to, to that. So that's the present element of it. He's working in us as part of our salvation, that we are being saved from the dominion of sin, mm-hmm. the, the habits, the effects of sin. Well, as you said, the verse kind of touches on it a little bit, but what about that future tense? What about we will be saved? Yeah, that that is equally amazing. The, the, the Christian will be saved at the return of Christ, from all the bodily infirmities that are the result of sin and part of the the uh, the curse mm-hmm. that are on the world. I mean, just you know the aches and pains of the physical body. Mm-hmm. That's all a part of the curse. Mm. You know, I'm just out for a nice walk last night. Man, my leg starts cramping up on me. I'm like, what in the <laughs> world? I'm just walking. I'm getting at the age now where I get up in the morning, I've hurt myself sleeping. You oh, know, I don't know how that. <laughs> for sure. I don't know. Well, we're going to be saved from all that in the future, and I'm really looking forward to that. But let's be let, let, let's make sure that we understand that there is a futuristic aspect of our salvation we will be saved from, but that does not by any means imply the possibility that our salvation is incomplete. Hmm. So I want to make sure that we're very clear on that. Mm -hmm. Our salvation is absolutely complete, but there are aspects to it of past, present, and future. So regarding the present and future parts of our salvation, um, theologian Burton Easton says this, salvation is both a present and a future matter for us. The full realization of all that God has in store will not be ours until the end of human history. And then he 
throws this little thing out there. It says, if indeed there will not be opened infinite possibilities of eternal growth. Mm -hmm. So hmm. that's kind of a, a very cool thing, too. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we've learned, as we've learned, that salvation is both something that occurs in our lives instantaneously mm -hmm. and then progressively. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's an instantane instantaneous event. Mm -hmm. I get saved. I come to Christ. Mm -hmm. And it's also a progressive experience in the life of a believer. But at its core, salvation is the most common biblical expression. And by the way, the word salvation, since we're talking about vocabulary words here, salvation is a verb. Mm -hmm. And I think we tend to Action. think of it as a noun. Mm -hmm. You know, well, salvation is this thing. Well, mm -hmm. yes, but it, it is an active verb. Something to think about. Those of you who like language, you'll get off on that, and the rest of you are like, whatever. But, uh, but it, it really is the most common biblical expression uh, that identifies this change that has been brought about in a person's life who, when by faith we come to Christ, we obtain salvation helps us or makes sure that we obtain all the benefits of the atonement of Christ on the cross and all the benefits of the empty grave the empty grave and i i love that you know in in being on the the worship team here at low country being able to see well we're masked up these days so you don't see it quite as much but all the smiling eyes <laughs> all the smiling eyes or sometimes the tearing eyes when you mm. have when when we sing together a verse about the cross or mm. about the empty grave because i think it brings us back right. to that instantaneous moment which where... we should never ever forget mm -hmm. right because and... that, that changed our lives it changed our eternal destiny mm -hmm. in that moment mm -hmm. but let's not forget too that salvation is something that is still being enacted in our in our lives we're secure in christ we're going to heaven mm -hmm. when we die jesus is our lord and savior but salvation didn't end at the moment of salvation which just makes it even better yeah and I think that's a perfect way to end our 50th podcast yeah. today because we've done a deep dive into salvation and we have a together. Little, a little deep dive. A little one. A little <laughs> one. Um, but then done what we want to do, which is make it applicable mm -hmm. to the lives we live. So that's about all the time we have today. <laughs> we hope our kitchen table theology family here have enjoyed this time together, that you've picked up a few things that will help you grow deeper in your understanding of our wonderful Christian faith. And don't forget to check out those episode notes when you get a chance. These are prepared and out there for just about every podcast that we do. They're created with you in mind to be that additional help as you do the deep dive <laughs> on things that we're just able to scratch the surface on here, the doctrines and theology of the Christian faith. So also please check out our website at Pastor Jeff Cranston or Pastor, no, no it's not Pastor, Jeff Cranston. just jeffcranston.com, where you can find our podcast archives. Dozens. we got to get you to learn the, the, um, the website. Well, I just always <laughs> run it all together. It's well, like Pastor, Pastor Jeff, Jeff Cranston, Cranston is the, the email. I know. It's See, a, just it doesn't. Let's, here's let's the thing. It doesn't matter. And if this is the worst <laughs> thing that we do today, we're going to have a good day. At least I didn't say jendenton.com because. Oh, there's no telling what's on there. It doesn't exist for me, so <laughs> I don't. I don't take any well, if, responsibility. If you go to jeffcranston.com, <laughs> you can see all those podcast archives and show notes or wherever you watch your uh, or listen to your podcast from. Yeah. And this week you wrote about St. Patrick on I your did. blog, right? Yeah. Will the real St. Patrick stand up? We stand have messed up. that up so badly. <laughs> we don't have a clue who he is, and he was quite a man. Well, I and even people that try to flush it, flush it, whatever they try to do, whatever they try to do out where they do the, you know, the thing about the, the clover and trying to talk about, we've talked about that on a podcast where he tried to explain um, the aspects Trinity. of the Trinity. Yeah, yes. Yeah. With that. Yeah. yeah. So. Anyways, go check out Patrick Jeff's <laughs> blog if you want to learn more about St. Patrick. And join us for our next podcast when we discuss the doctrine of redemption. Yep. That's going to be a good one, too. And it's another big word with a beautiful background and meaning for each of us. So you won't want to miss it. And after all that, if you're still listening or watching, <laughs> uh, honestly, on behalf of Jen and I, thank you for being part of this community. Over 10,000 downloads and 50 episodes. I mean, I... I, I was hoping that would happen, but mm -hmm. man, I, I'm really glad God's been good in that way and we're still there. Jen and I are so grateful for your support, your questions, and your encouragement along the way. 
And we've got some special thanks to mm-hmm. all the fellows in the back room over here. Our sound engineer, Gabe Diaz, who sticks with us through all of these. Gabe's getting an education on many fronts. <laughs> he is. He is. <laughs> he's getting the true peek behind the curtain because he's here with us every week. And our videographers today, Blake Woods and John Merkel. Not Markle, like the princess, John Merkel. Thanks for that yes. clarity. Yeah. I, it might be confusing sometimes. <laughs> and as always, thanks to our family here at Low Country Community Church, right here and now, pollen covered, Bluffton, South oh, Carolina. Oh, my word. Yeah, it is covered in pollen, isn't it? Well, we're getting rain today, so it's going to wash it and away. And then some, yeah. <laughs> but thanks, everyone, for making Kitchen Table Theology possible. Join us next time as we remember that the real power of theology is not only knowing it, but applying, applying it. it. You've been listening to the Kitchen Table Theology Podcast with Jen Denton and Pastor Jeff Cranston. Join us next time for more insights into biblical truth. If you'd like to know more on today's topic, you can check out the show notes at jeffcranston.com. You can also email us at pastorjeff at lowcountrycc.org. If you're enjoying this podcast, would you consider leaving a rating and review on iTunes? We deeply appreciate your help in getting the word out. And be sure to subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or in your favorite podcasting app to continue this journey with us as we learn about and apply God's Word to our lives. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time here at Kitchen Table Theology.